Welcome to my final reflections on IDT 3600. My reflection covers 15 examples of things I learned about in this course that meet the standards for the International Society for Technology and Education. ISTE Standard 1 states, facilitate and inspire student learning and creativity. And this course has taught me numerous ways to do this. And I have here a graphic organizer I created earlier in the semester using Kidspiration. Part A of Standard 1 says to promote support and model creative and innovative thinking and inventiveness. And I think graphic organizers definitely allow students to be creative and inventive and that they get to choose what they would like to include in their organizer. Secondly, I have WebQuest, which I think is an excellent tool that meets ST Standard 1B because it allows for students to use digital tools and resources to explore real world issues because many web quests are set up like a scenario for students to imagine themselves in. For example, the web quest we completed in this course had a detective theme. Lastly, for this standard, I think instructional comics are a good example of facilitating student creativity. For one thing, it draws the attention of students and then they can in turn express their learning through comic strip creations of their own. Moving on to ISTE Standard 2, which says to design and develop digital age learning experiences and assessments. And I have interactive activities listed as one example for this. For example, 2C says to personalize learning activities so that they address students' diverse learning styles, working strategies, and abilities using digital tools and resources. Since there are so many interactive educational games available to meet the particular needs of students, students have the option to choose a game style they like while still learning a particular standard. I have WebQuest as an example because I think it is a wonderful way to use technology to enrich the learning experiences of students because they can choose which sources within a WebQuest they would like to utilize. I think this touches on standard 2B. Graphic organizers basically meet all parts of ISTE Standard 2, particularly 2A, in that they are a great way to promote student creativity. The graphic organizer I created this semester was in accordance to Tennessee State Standard 2.22, and I was able to select pictures of landmarks that I like best, and I included information that I felt was relevant to each of those places. So having control over the pictures and information I included shows how graphic organizers meet standard 2C and that they are a personalized learning activity done using a digital tool. In accordance to 2D, they also can serve as an assessment because it shows various ways that a student has absorbed information. ISTE Standard 3 states model digital age work and learning, and this really is what this whole course was about. And I have a sample photo of Unit 1 from the semester because I felt this unit served as a great introduction to showing us how to meet ISTE Standard 3. For example, to the top right, you see a sample photo of an assignment we did in which we watched two videos of different schools that incorporated technology. And we were asked to list five different types of technology that we saw used in the school, what technology skills and non-technology skills we felt that the students gained from using technology, and lastly, we, we were asked to compare these school environments to the one we see ourselves teaching in in the future. So I just felt that this whole unit introduced us to how we can demonstrate fluency in technology systems at like stated in standard 3A. I saw that Mary Krog's elementary in the first video had classroom pages. So that touches on 3C and that the teacher the teachers of the school were able to communicate information and ideas through the class page to the students and their parents. So that leads me to talk about Web 2.0 tools, which we learned are web-based tools that are free and allow for collaboration between users. And one of our assignments this semester was to compile a list of five Web 2.0 tools in which we included the name of the tool, its URL, a brief description of the tool, and ways it can be used by both the teacher and students, as well as some advantages of the tool. And then we created a Prezi on our favorite Web, web 2.0 tool, and I chose Digo. But anyway, Web 2.0 tools are just great ways to collaborate, so that addresses 3B as well as 3D of this standard. 
Lastly, for standard three, I have lecture capture, and we learned about various tools for doing this. Firstly, Vocaroo, which is an audio capture tool that allows for easy voice recording, and then Screencast-O-Matic and video editing. Prior to this course, I had never worked with video editing software, nor had I created a podcast or done a screencast, but these skills definitely allow for me to meet standard three in that I am able to exhibit skills that are representative of an innovative professional in this global and digital society. ISTE standard four says to promote and model digital citizenship and responsibility. And I have WebQuest for one of my examples because I like how they allow for teachers to select all sources prior to having the student utilize them because for one, the teacher has seen beforehand that all content is appropriate. Kids can easily run across inappropriate content when doing online research and WebQuest sort of gives control to the teacher without taking the responsibility and independence from the student's own research. So that meets standard 4A because I can advocate for and promote safe use of digital information using WebQuest. Additionally, WebQuest also have a teacher page for crediting sources. So that allows for respect for copyright, intellectual property, and the appropriate documentation of sources as stated in 4A. I recalled our discussion from Unit 9 when I reviewed SD Standard 4 because in it we talked about how we would handle a situation in which a student is accessing inappropriate sites and what strategies we could use to prevent this type of off-task behavior. And several students brought up how there are various types of software that allow teachers to block certain sites. But of course, those aren't entirely reliable. And so we also talked about tools that allow teachers to directly monitor each student's computer screen to see exactly what they're on. And of course, a teacher can always walk around and monitor the class. But overall, we mainly talked about how rules, um, as well as the consequences for violating those rules, need to be clearly communicated to the class before the internet is used. So I just felt this discussion really helped us grow in a way where we can meet standard 4A, as well as promote and model digital etiquette like stated in 4C. My last example for this standard is Web 2.0 tools, because the use of these tools will allow for me to model digital citizenship and responsibility so that my students can exhibit that same etiquette when they use digital tools. Lastly, we have ISTE standard 5, which says engage in professional growth and leadership. And immediately I thought of Unit 11, in which we worked with coding. And in this unit, there were three documents included, and I have a sample photo of the document for Tennessee pictured here in the bottom right. And each of these documents contain a lot of statistics concerning computer science. And I found out that computer science is one of the most in-demand college degrees, yet only 8% of STEM graduates study it, and 75% of U.S. schools don't even offer computer science courses. These documents contained a checklist of things we can do to improve computer science education. So I really appreciated the inclusion of these documents in this course because I feel this knowledge will allow me to meet ISTE Standard 5. For example, I can address 5A by participating and raising awareness about incorporating computer science education into schools. And just raising awareness and taking action as laid out in the documents will allow for me to exhibit leadership, as mentioned in Standard 5B, because I would be taking initiative and in getting computer science courses into our schools. I would address 5C as well and that I would be making effective use of emerging digital tools, in this case coding, in support of student learning. Secondly, I feel that lecture capturing tools we learned about will definitely allow for me to engage in professional growth and leadership because I can directly express myself using these tools. And lastly, I wanted to mention the lesson planning we did this uh, semester where we incorporated technology. We learned early on in this course how technolo technology should always be used as a tool to aid and enrich student learning. So. Just being able to create plans that do this will allow me to meet standard 5B, which says exhibit leadership by demonstrating a vision of technology infusion, which is what I feel I'm accomplishing through my incorporating of technology in multi-application lesson plans. Additionally, I'm developing the leadership and technology skills of my students through these lessons and also making effective use of existing and emerging digital tools and resources in support of student learning as stated in 5C. So that concludes my final reflection and I want to say thank you and that it has been a wonderful semester.